heavy police presence in the suburb of Bakasi, on the outskirts of Jakarta. This is what preparations for Sunday prayers looks like here these days. For the last few weeks, a group of Christians have been holding their prayer services in this area, under police protection. This is what they're trying to prevent. Sunday mass at the field has often resulted in violent clashes between Bikasi's Christians and Muslims. This is what's causing the tension between the two sides. A vacant plot of land in the middle of a Muslim majority area in Bekasi. This land is at the heart of the conflict between the two communities in Bekasi. The Christians say it belongs to them and they have the right to pray here. The Muslims say the Christians need a permit before they can make this land a place of worship. They've even put up signs warning Christians about what will happen if they continue with their prayers on Sunday. This one, for example, says, stop these illegal prayers right now, church people, or the public will take action. It hasn't always been like this. Rizomas has lived in Bekasi for the last 20 years. As a Christian, she's a minority here. But for decades, she's lived alongside her Muslim neighbors in peace. But now, this religious quarrel is threatening to rip this harmonious society apart. They're very narrow-minded. I don't know how they see God. I feel that my God protects me, but they seem to think that they need to defend their God. I guess that's the difference between us. There's no problem with praying. But when they are there with a mission to build a place of worship, it's unacceptable. Murhali Barda has taken up this cause. He's the leader of the Islamic Defenders Front in Bekasi. The Christians say it's behind the clashes in the area. On this Sunday, they held their mass, surrounded by hundreds of angry Muslim residents. Neighbors turned to foes. Murhali confronts the priest and asks him to leave, saying the Christians are provoking the Muslims in the area. He warns that if they continue with their prayers, this religious conflict will escalate. If we start calling for holy war, then it doesn't matter whether we live or die. If there is violence that results from this, the Christians have only themselves to blame. The problems in Bakasi have caught the attention of the entire nation. In Jakarta, the capital city, Indonesians of different faiths joined forces, raising their voices in unison, demanding their government takes action and puts an end to this religious intolerance. Indonesia is not a Muslim country. It is a secular nation that believes in the right of its citizens to practice their religion freely. But the government says it's handling the problem. I don't think we lack any political will. I don't think we lack resolve. On the contrary, we are doing what we can. But we must do these things within a democracy. It must be a democratic response as well. I mean, there is a fine balance between, uh, you know, when we want to ensure civil liberties, it's civil liberties to all. But critics say the government isn't taking this problem seriously enough. In January, it's record eight cases. Bonar Naipospos has been gathering evidence of attacks against religious minorities. He says there's been a huge jump in attacks this year and warns there's a danger this religious conflict could spread. This incident happened in greater area of Jakarta. Jakarta is capital city of Indonesia. If the government cannot solve the problem in the place we are near the central, near the capital city, how the government can solve the problem if something happened in outside Java, outside the region. Back in Bekasi, the congregation is on its way to the field for another Sunday service. The police are out in full force. They're taking no chances. But this isn't a permanent solution. Indonesia must find a way to ensure that its minorities can worship without fear, or else this local brawl could turn into a national nightmare. Karishma Viswani, BBC News, Bekasi, on the outskirts of Jakarta.